All right, Shalom, Shalom, Yasha'Allah, first and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and infinite praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Ba'ashem, double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, peace and salutations to the Lex God of the Broad, pushing his truth and sincerity, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, 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 to you, Zaquanium, Wa'akim, Wa'akwafium, you know, your elders, your brothers, your sisters, the whole full elect out there laboring, keeping the commandments to the best of your ability, giving diligence, making your call and election short, and of course, keeping faith. And Yahweh, Wah, Yahweh Shai, in these last days and these perilous times that we're living in. This is Brother Pashai, Ban Yashallah, and this will be a quick lesson through the Spirit and Pabi Yahweh Shai Shai. On a couple articles that came across, right, um, there's one specific article I got lined up, right, basically going to the solar storm that's heading towards the Earth at 1.6 million kilometers per hour, you see? And basically what they're saying, right, read this title right here. Right. But they basically what they're saying is that I can knock out, you know, GPS, mo mo uh, mobile signals, you know, po um, power outages, stuff like that. The Internet, you know, so and this is likely they said it should hit either yesterday or today. Right. They said it might hit today. Right. So read this title right here. So it says there's a solar storm heading towards Earth. It might hit today. GPS, mobile and mobile signals to be affected. The high speed solar storm might also black out high frequency radio waves and affect communications across large areas. And we know we live in a society where everything is based off technology. You know what I'm saying? And, um, if a uh, solar storm hits and it knocks out the power and knocks out the internet, GPS, you know, radio frequency waves and stuff like that, we know things gonna go back to that of the 1800s or the 1700s, you know? And people are so um, used to a society that's um, built off technology, smartphones, you know, TVs, tablets, laptops, you know, internet, you know what I'm saying? Even like the, um, those, the fast food chains, restaurants people go to, everything is, you know, technical, you know, refrigerators, you know, everything is, you know, electronic, you see? So if all of that gets shut down, people can have to, um, people are going to panic, you know, because people going to have to adapt to how um, things used to be back then. But also even back then in like 1800s, the, the, um, the United States population was far less than it is today, you know? So people are going to be scrapping for resources, man, you know? So we know if this hits, you know, and low willing it does, man. You know, we know it's going to be a chain reaction to more prophecies to come to pass. It's going to knock in the famine of hearing the words of the Lord because the Internet gets knocked out due to the solar storm. We know um, um, YouTube is shut down, you know, daily motion, other platforms, brothers, he's the word on, you know, all that is shut down. Now, people can't get the words, you know, and, you know, the Lord is going to put the spirit upon the brothers to stop going out there and teaching or hell breaking loose because this will cause chaos. You know, people are going to panic. We're going to live in a crazy world if the internet is out, if a lights out situation goes on, you know. And ultimately, we know it's Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah sending this man, the Heavenly Father. You see, he's the one that's going to send this man, whether by a solar storm, whether by Esau um, uh, letting off an EMP attack, cyber, a massive cyber attack. It don't matter. Either or it's coming from the Heavenly Father. It's coming from the Almighty, man, the Father of Spirits, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah. You see. So, um, and also that will trickle down to an actual famine, not just famine here in the words of the Lord, it will trickle down to an actual famine. Because people are going to, you know, um, 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 run out of resources, run out of food, run out of water quicker. You know what I'm saying? Because the same, you know, everything is, um, um, this society's um, structure is built off of the technology. You know, so if the internet goes out, then hey, you know, your food supplies, you know, the trucks that bring in the food, they won't be bringing in the food to the, um, to the stores, your local um, grocery stores, your supermarkets. Stuff like that, man. You know? So we know it's going to trickle down to an actual famine. And it's going to hit the cities the hardest because, you know, the cities, you can't, you know, really cultivate the earth and stuff like that and harvest and farm. And people don't know how to do that no more. <laughs> you know? So we we understand the time that we're approaching, man. So this is, you know, something quick, straight to the point. You know, we got to stay on our watch. You know, measure thou the time diligently in itself. You know, and the most times he's visiting his world, man. He's going to visit the world with storm and with tempest. I'm going to get that in Isaiah 29th chapter. As a matter of fact, I'll read it right now. Right, I read it right now. Then I'll go back to the article. Right, gotta get these precepts out. So Isaiah 29. <clears throat> bear with me, Ashala. Bear with me while it's loading up. Okay, Isaiah 29 and verse six. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of Hosts, Yahweh Bashem Al Shav armies, with thunder and with earthquake and great noise, with storm. And tempest and the flame of devouring fire. So that's how the Heavenly Father visits the world which he made. With storm, tempest, thunder, earthquake, great noise. 
you know, natural disasters. And this solar storm is a storm, you see? And I'm gonna read the article, it says it's coming at 1.6 million kilometers per hour, I believe. You know, so that's, a, that's coming in fast, man. And it's gonna, it's gonna um, hit, it's gonna have an effect on the magnetic field which will knock out the, you know, um, radio frequency waves. It will knock out GPS signals, you know, the internet, right? So I'm going to get that in a second. Matter of I'll get it right now. It's locking. So it says, there's a solar storm heading towards Earth. It might hit today. GPS, mobile signals to be affected. The high-speed solar storm might also black out high-frequency radio waves and affect communications across large areas. The author of this article is um, HD Tech, updated on July 13th, which was yesterday. 2021 at 12 48 p.m right let's read on down right i believe they give me like a you know a picture of the sun the solar storm and stuff like that so it says yeah it says here's what a solar flare looks like right so it says nasa national um aeronautics and space administration has some not so good news for earthlings there's a high speed solar storm heading our way and it's coming in at the speed of 1.6 million kilometers per hour this solar, so, this solar storm is expected to hit Earth, Earth's magnetic field later today and can affect electric supply and communications across the world. And, I was, and as I was skimming through other articles, I believe they was mentioning how it was going to hit um, either Tuesday or Wednesday. And today is Wednesday. So if it didn't hit yesterday, it may hit today. If not today, tomorrow. Or who knows? You know, just, just an update. Right? Like I said, a little willingness can actually go down. Right, so this says this solar storm is expected to hit Earth's magnetic field later today and can affect electric supply and communication across the world. This solar storm or solar flare, as it is also known as flowing from um, equilateral hole in the sun's atmosphere, it was first detected on July 3rd. It can travel at a maximum speed of 500 kilometers per second, I believe that means, as spaceweather.com points out. Now let's watch this, we're on down, it says, while a full-fledged geomagnetic storm is unlikely, lesser geomagnetic unrest could cause high altitude um auroras. I believe I should pronounce that word, right? Let me just let me just double check. It won't hurt. Let me copy that. See exactly like how you pronounce this word. And also I want to see what that word means. Alright, so one second, Yashala. Don't allow. Okay. It's not letting me know how to pronounce it though. In any event, I'll try my best. Aurora, I believe I pronounce it. And aurora is a colorful light show in the sky caused by the sun. Auroras happen when particles from the sun interact with gases in our atmosphere, causing beautiful displays of light in the sky. These lights are called auroras. If you're near the North Pole, it's called an aurora um, borealis or northern lights. Okay, so that's what it is. It's like the northern light. Let's go back. So it says, lesser ge geomagnetic unrest could cause high altitude auroras or northern lights, right? Satellites in the Earth's upper atmosphere are expected to get affected by the, in the incoming solar flares, and this is going to impact GPS navigation. So listen closely. This is going to impact GPS navigation, mobile phone signal, people are going to lose signal, right? And satellite TV. Power grids might also be affected by this. Power grids, right? The grids that power up our um infrastructure man which is vulnerable the america's infrastructure is vulnerable right so it says power grids might also be affected by this according to space weather prediction center usa this solar storm can also black out high frequency radio communication for about an hour over a vast area they have marked the solar flares at x1 level where x de um denotes the strength of the flare mm. so it's at x1 level so it says this solar storm might take down radio communications, mobile signals, and GPS signals for, for a while and render them ineffective while the storm passes over. Signals, are, signals over large parts of the planet are expected to be affected by this phenomenon sometime today. The effect, the effect is not going to be a permanent one and normalcy and signal strength and function is going to resume once the storm passes. That's what they say, because you know Esau, he's not gonna let a good crisis go to waste. So if that, if this storm hits, you know Esau, the devil, you know exactly what he's gonna do. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna take that, but okay, let's listen to EMP attack on top of this, <laughs> you know, or something, man. You know, you know the devil, man. So there's a couple articles going into going to this. It's, this one says um, solar storm heading towards Earth likely to hit today, can't impact GPS move signal. You know, this one says the same thing. 
Um, oh, this one says solar storm set to hit Earth today can lead to global power failure, not just in America, not just in Canada, you know, not in Brazil, global power failure, right? This one says, no, there isn't a solar storm headed to Earth today. There's a solar storm headed towards the Earth, so you know, they got to add that to add confusion, Babylon, right? So whether, it, whether, it's, whether it's coming or not, you know, we already know things can come down to the wire. You know, the Lord is visiting his world, man. So let's, let's get the two precepts. I'm going to close out. First Peter 4 and 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober, clear minded and watch unto prayer. You know, now it's time to be sober, clear minded and, and continue to be on our watch. And we got to pray, man. We got to pray to the Heavenly Father for, for protection, for guidance, you know, deliverance, salvation. Because, man, the times is approaching to be terrible, man. You know, he's the one that's bringing it, you know. So we got to be praying all the time, be on our watch. We got to measure it out of time diligently in itself. I'm going to get that as well. Let me get that. In second Edges, I believe it's the 15th chapter, of course. No, 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 it's not. It was the ninth chapter. Slocky. Second Edges 9 verse 1. He answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest we will begin to visit the world which he made and I, and I got this precept in Isaiah 29 and verse 6 how the Lord visits the world man right therefore and there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world then shall thou well understand that the, mo that the most high speak of those things from the days of before thee even from the beginning for like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and the end and the end is manifest so the end is manifesting itself it's clear you know it's, it's clear as day to time that we in right even so, the times also of the highest have, have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. And everyone that shall be saved. So that's what we got to pray for, man, to be saved, to be a part of this number. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith. You see, it goes hand in hand, works and faith, whereby ye have believed. Shall be preserved from the said perils, perils going to a, what perilous, dangerous, you know, trouble sometimes shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. So the elect was sanctified from the beginning to get delivered and saved, man. You know, from these troubling times coming on this earth. Right from there, I want to get this. And this will be the lesson. Ephesians 5 and verse um, 15. See then that you walk circumspectly. When you're circumspect, you know, when you're circumspect, you're on your watch. You're watching your surroundings. You know what I'm saying? Um, spiritually and physically, you're on your watch. You're looking all around you, you know? See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. You know, some evil days, man. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get one more. Romans 13. Stop here. And verse 11. And it reads, In that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. You know, so people that's not on a watch, they don't understand that solar storms and natural disasters, EMP attacks, cyber attacks, stuff like that are likely. They don't they don't understand that. They're not on a watch. But us, you know, the hopeful elect, we see these things and we and we um do lessons on them, do epistles on them, because we understand um yeah, we do um lessons on them, epistles, video epistles, you know what I'm saying? Cause we understand the time that we in. You know, we understand that um it's not the time to be asleep because when people are asleep they're vulnerable they're going to get caught off guard they, they're not they're going to they're going to you know open the eyes and have to deal with whatever's in front of them you know that's why the scriptures say what well, the day of the lord come like a thief in the night you know but not to us that they're not going to overtake us like a thief because we're on our watch you see so we got to understand what that our salvation is near than when we believe man that's why we always say low willing this could happen low willing that could happen you see because we understand that this society must collapse the scriptures say what Second Ernest six, the sixth chapter verse nine says what? For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So Esau's world gotta come to an end, so Jacob's can come into fruition. You know, and we know our Lord Yahweh Shai, he came out of the tribe of Judah, which is one of the sons of Jacob. You know, so we understand what Jacob beginning to follow. That's the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, was gonna be an everlasting kingdom. So we understand that this world has to collapse for um our Lord to come back. And um um and our Lord come back in the, in the midst of this world on fire, as we're in the scriptures, Luke twelve and forty nine, if I'm not mistaken, you know. So this society must collapse, you know, for the kingdom of heaven to come in, basically. 
you know so that's why we say low willing the storm could happen low willing the emp attack could happen low willing could happen this year you know because we the quicker this man's kingdom come down man is the quicker the kingdom of heaven get established man righteousness man on this earth i'm tired of this wicked place you know so low willing the solar storm can actually you know actually hit you know um uh, either today tomorrow if not man we, we still gonna be on our watch you know so it says romans 13 11 and that knowing the time that now it is high time till we got to sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Scripture saying in Ephesians, the what, the um, sixth chapter, put on the whole armor of the Most High that you, may, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, you know? And I was in the set as above all, put, taking that shield of faith, man. We gotta go, we gotta approach these times with faith. You know, we don't know how we're going to eat during the famine. We don't know. We don't know how we're going to do these. We know it's written. The servants going to eat, you know, but the rest of the people going to be hungry. We know it's written in the scriptures. The Lord going to deliver us and have mercy upon us, you know, but we got to we gotta, we gotta have that faith, man. You know, we don't see like we don't see the Lord, you know, um, already like um, have things stored up for us. Like only when you when you, when, this, when time come, go here, eat this food, drink this water. We don't physically see it with our eyes, you know, spiritually we see it. That we are here. The Lord got something for us, but he got something prepared for us, man. You know, so we got to have that faith. That's what the Lord, he wants us to have faith, man. Faith is what the substance of things not seen, you know, no size. Faith, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that right fast. That's in Hebrews, which is the word of Yahweh. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for. See, we hope for salvation. We hope to eat during the famine. You know, we hope for deliverance, man. The evidence of things not seen, you know, so we... Like, it's gonna say it right here. Um, as a matter of fact, where's it at? Uh, no, no, no. It's in another scripture. Something like this. Lock it. Let me see. So lock yeah. I'm gonna have to search up on Google. There's a scripture I'm thinking about. Oh, right here. Romans 8 chapter. Romans 8. <clears throat> in verse 24, for we are saved by hope. You see? But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? See, if the Lord had it where we could see it right now, you know, that's not really going, the Lord not going to be like, um, how can we show, showcase our faith in the Lord if we see it right now? All the food and all the water he going to give for us, you know, see the you know angels around us, stuff like that. He gave us different signs to boost up our faith, but the Lord wanted us to, to believe and have hope in the things that we don't see. It says right here, but if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it, you know? So that's what we patiently waiting for. Deliverance, you know? Let's get this, Hebrews 6, 11 and 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to the Most High, Yahweh by Shemel Shai, must believe that he is and, he, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, you know. So we're, dil we're diligently seeking Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, measuring all the time, diligently, all of that, man. Giving diligence to make a call, giving diligence to make a call and election sure. And the Lord promised what deliverance for us, man. You know. So it says, let us walk honestly, not in a day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, undisciplined, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach and make not provision for the flesh of, to fulfill the lust thereof. You know, so that day is approaching, man. You know, so I pray this edifying, straight to the point. I'm going to give Kohalayim La Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Akakudash, double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, peace and salutations that like scattered abroad, pushing his truth and sincerity, man. We have to approach these times with faith in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. Right? So with that, I'm going to say Shalom.